from Repro Studios, Badass Yay. Fans Vlog. We're here today with the lovely Inch Chua. Thank Dude. you for being here today. Not at all. Um, so I guess I'm ready just to get into it. You ready to answer some questions? Born ready. <laughs> all right, so when and why did you start playing music? I started playing music as a way to escape and express myself. Um, I grew up wanting to be a painter and uh, that was mainly how I expressed myself. But I felt that for some reason painting couldn't really wasn't enough, like I had more in me that I wanted to say and music kind of just took its place eventually. Nice. What t what age did music kind of take its place? Well, I started going to gigs at 14. Nice. Um, and of course, like any other girl, why you got into music was because of a boy. <laughs> Some dude came up to me and was like, you want to see my band? And like, yeah, you're like, yeah, I'll totally go see your band. And we went to watch his band, but in the end fell in love with the idea of going to gigs and watching gigs and watching bands more so than him and <laughs> eventually two years down the road I was 16 and I was like I've been watching bands so much and I'm like I might as well just start one and just see how to do that so I will log online to your Craigslist of a version in Singapore uh, called soft.com and I was like young female singer looking for band members and <laughs> Did a couple auditions and started playing shows. Yeah. Nice. So what was it like when you finally played your first show and you were actually on stage instead of watching? I think playing it like in a band, it's kind of cool because like you, you have a lot of different creative energy on stage and I, I never really thought about it. It was just kind of like going to a hockey game. It feels like you're just doing something together with your friends. Yeah. But when the first time I started my solo project and when it's your songs, your voice, your everything, it gets a little intense because you're, you're, it's all you and like if you fall flat on your face, it's, it's kind of just you <laughs> falling flat on your face. But it, w it was really, really huge. Like I played, the first show I ever played as a solo artist was in a library. And it's wow. like, a li like a bookstore library. Yeah. Everyone was supposed to be quiet and there I was <laughs> making music. And uh, yeah, you just played with bookshelves and it felt pretty good actually. Um, 
It was a good. I thought it was a good first gig. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. So who <laughs> who are your musical influences? Uh, so many. And this time, I would say classical people such as like Queen. Freddie Mercury is one of my biggest idols. Beck Hansen, amazing artist, crazy genius. <laughs> um, yeah, and I absolutely love the Foo Fighters, and nice. uh, Yeah Yeah Yeahs. So generally, bands with a whole lot of rock and roll. Mm-hmm. But not the genre rock and roll, but the rock and roll attitude, you know? Nice.
play sometimes with the band, sometimes by yourself. Do you want to talk about your band a little bit? Yeah, I, I love my band. Um, we're called Inch and the Metric System. Uh, the guys are, they're sort of a revolving door of musicians. I mean, sometimes it really it, it changes. But right now, the lineup is James Roll on guitar, uh, Patrick Taylor on bass, and Anthony Paul Lopez from The Absolutes as the drummer. And uh, it's been fun touring with them and playing a couple of shows. Um, they're, I definitely, for this album, I felt like I wanted a, a band to sort of represent the sound. So it's been really great to work with different energies, having different ideas, and kind of really, after be doing the solo thing for a while, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to be able to have other people's creative inputs and energy around again. Yeah, interesting. So then how does your creative process work now? Now it's sort of, um, I have production ideas, I'll write the songs, and I can see where it's going, and usually the guys would, I'll give them guidelines on where they can play, and they would sort of do their thing, and eventually I'll start sculpting. It's like, mm, I don't really like that. I'm not feeling this. Let's change it this, or that's a great idea. So it's kind of like, it, it's more of like you create, but there's a, a mirror of reflect, or a reflection of ideas that kind of keep bouncing off. And it's great when you have, when you know something, because when you myopically look at something, you, you don't really know how great it is until sometimes it's nice to have that creative affirmation from someone you trust. Yeah. And, and that's always good right now. Because nice. when you make music alone, it gets lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So where are your favorite spots so far that you've played live? So far, Silver Lake Lounge, Florida <laughs> Badass Band. <laughs> That's very flattering. <laughs> no, it was, it was such a fun night that night. It was really, really it good. Was fun. It was fun. So I'm really looking forward to play again for any time for Badass Band. Nice. And as well as, like, um, we've got another show coming up on Hemingway's. So That's a cool yeah, venue. I'm slowly slight, like discovering the LA scene and, mm -hmm. and the people here, and it's just really exciting. So what's the difference between the scene back home that you grew up with, because you're from Singapore, That's right. and the scene here in LA? Honestly, it's I realize that it's not that different. Like there's a lot of similarities. Like you know, a community of musicians, a community of artists that get together, and a community of of media reviewers such as yours like bloggers and tastemakers that mm -hmm. get together and uh, there's always a location where it's an anchor for everyone to kind of gather and um, yeah it, it's it's just healthy when it becomes very communal you know and eventually people get it you are you love what you do people get excited at what you do too and and it just grows without you even knowing so to me like the similarity is that there is a lot of hunger, there's a lot of love for each other in terms of artists. Mm -hmm. um, the real difference is that, um, I guess maybe because Singapore, Singapore, the population is pretty small in comparison to LA, um, so it, it does even it's easy to max out what you do very fast. Gotcha. Um, but in LA, it's the problem is similar. Um, there is a huge population, but it is very spread out. So it, it kind of, it, it's like, it, they both have, I mean, the grass is never greener on the other side. That's what I've noticed. That's what I've learned when I got here. It's like, <laughs> it's different. Just tastes different. That's all. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I can't quit you. I can't do it without this vice. Oh, I can't quit you. Lord knows I tried oh, to quit you I can't call you out of my spine No, oh, I can't quit you No system over
see. <laughs> Are you ready to answer some random questions? Random. All right. One song you never get tired of. Oh, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sugary song. Nice. <laughs> nice. It's a, it's this song called uh, Answer the Phone. I don't know if I know. It's the song. opening track of the, the self-titled album. I do know I that know song. That's your home. You never get tired of that song. No, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna do it again. Do it again. Yeah, that just puts me like in a happy mood. My favorite things to do, not musically related. If I'm not rocking out, I'm very domesticated. Like I just stay home, play video games. You live a double life. Like I, I know. Yeah, I think I think my life lives in extremities. Like you know, just to balance it out, it's yeah. like it's gotta be like really crazy. <laughs> you could be a fictional character. Ooh, Who would you be? Fictional character. Um, I would love to be Lara Croft. She's pretty much a badass. She's so she badass. Really is. Come on. She really you is. get paid to jump off planes, <laughs> look for hidden artifacts, wrestle a bear and a tiger. Come on. And be hot at the same time. That's true. Who That's doesn't want to be Lara Croft? With like tons of money. Because like you're like a duke's daughter or something. Yeah, like yeah. It's really the best thing you could possibly be. Best way much. to spend money. Just yeah. be a badass. That's what it is. <laughs>